so this is the uh, cell uh, an illustration of the cell with the all different components and you can see there are so many components and they are um, each one of them has a certain function or functions and it's quite complex uh, it's very really 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 amazing um, how the whole cell is organized so um, the parts that we will be talking about include the nucleus, uh, nuclear envelope, um, we already talked about chromatin uh, and DNA, uh, we'll talk about peroxisome, mitochondria, the endoplasmic reticulum in this lecture, uh, we'll talk about mitochondria and the Golgi apparatus lysosomes, the plasma membrane in this lecture, we'll talk about the different types of filament filamentous structures in cells um, that make up the cytoskeleton. Uh, we're not going to talk about vacuoles um, or um, uh, chloroplasts that's in, in, uh, in plant cells. So again these are the different parts um, and, and their functions in general. Uh, we'll start with the interplasmic reticulum which is responsible for preparation modification of proteins for further modification in the Golgi um, and their uh, release out of the cell or uh, transport into different parts organelles of the cell in addition to uh, synthesis of um, important uh, molecules such as cholesterol and uh, certain lipids okay so there are uh, four major components of cells in terms of molecules and these are nucleic acids, carbohydrates, proteins and lipids. Now the thing is um, uh, three of them are polymers, the first three nucleic acids, carbohydrates and proteins. Lipids are heterogeneous and the only thing that is common uh, between them is that they are hydrophobic molecules. Now if you look at overall the composition of lipids in different um, uh, parts of the cell, uh, particularly the plasma membrane, you would find that about 50% of the plasma membrane is made of lipids, about 40% uh, is made of uh, proteins and the rest is carbohydrates. So this is the uh, distribution of uh, different um, macromolecules, proteins, li lipids and carbohydrates in different parts of cells or in different cells. And I only want to want you to uh, pay attention to the underlined uh, numbers in here. So I, I don't care about the exact numbers of course, I only care about the, um, the overall trend. So for example you can see that uh, the plasma membrane of human erythrocytes you would find that about 50% uh, of the membrane is made of proteins and about 45% um, is made of uh, uh, lipids. Okay, So the ratio between proteins to lipids is 1 to 1. Okay, So look, compare this to myelin sheath. Myelin sheath is mainly composed of lipids, so it's really a structural uh, component of the body and the ratio is about uh, one protein to uh, three molecules of lipids okay so uh, compare this for example to the mitochondria you look at the mitochondrial outer membrane and the ratio is also one to one now if you compare this to mitochondrial inner membrane you would find that it's mainly composed of proteins compared to lipids. So the ratio is uh, uh, three, almost uh, three folds. So this is, uh, by the way, this should be I think 3.2, not 32. Okay. So the thing is, um, uh, you know, th that that serves the purpose of this part of the cell uh, in general. Now, even if you look at the types of lipids that exist in different parts uh, of the cell, you would find that in the myelin sheath, they, they are mainly composed of a lot of cholesterol and a lot of glycolipids. Okay, so you can compare that to, for example, um, the the mitochondria. 
there are traces traces little amount of glycolipids some cholesterol but not a whole lot so now this cholesterol by the way is a, ma a major component uh, in animal plasma membranes it's not present in bacteria or, or plant cells now plant cells may contain certain type of molecules like that that look like cholesterol but they are not cholesterol. so if you look at the plasma membrane of let's say erythrocytes or any other regular cell you would find that the plasma membrane is made of two leaflets you have the outer leaflet that is uh, exposed to the outside of the cell and you have the inner leaflet that is uh, oriented towards the inside to the cytosol of cells and you would find that the outer leaflet and inner leaflet uh, have different compositions of, uh, of uh, uh, lipids so the outer leaflet mainly is made of phosphatidylcholine or uh, sphingomyelin the inner leaflet is made of ethanol amine serine and inositol there are small uh, amounts of phosphatidyl inositol in the inner leaflet of the plasma membrane uh, and the main function of phosphatidyl inositol uh, is mainly cell signaling so not a whole lot is needed but you need some to induce signaling okay so uh, now the the head groups of both phosphatidyl serine and phosphatidyl inositol are negatively charged making the this side of the plasma membrane uh, to have a in general a net negative charge now something important is that glycolipids and glycoproteins okay what's missing here is glycoproteins so glycolipids and glycoproteins are mainly found on the outside of the cell now when we look at the plasma membrane uh, it looks like a m it looks like a mosaic right but in fact it does not uh, there are certain regions in the plasma membrane that are quite unique to other regions uh, uh, among these regions is something known as lipid rafts so these are like clusters of uh, of uh, distinguished or distinct uh, molecules in the plasma membrane so these areas lipid drafts they are rich in cholesterol as well as sphingolipids now and and these raft rafts lipid drafts are also rich in glycosyl phosphatidyl inositol anchored proteins so basically what you have here is a fatty acid uh, in addition to a number of sugar molecules regardless of what they are okay and attached to and you have ethanol I mean and attached to this a protein molecule so this is one uh, mechanism by which proteins can be attached to plasma membranes now lipid drafts are also rich in signaling molecules so you see them clustered in here okay and that makes it easier for signaling molecules to find each other it's not like they are uh, uh, distributed throughout the plasma membrane rather they are present in certain regions so that makes them makes it easier for these molecules to find each other to collide with each other and for signaling to be initiated now lipid drafts are also important in terms of uh, uh, in, in terms of association with diseases so for example the HIV uh, virus uh, it, it buds it gets out of the cell from lipid drafts so it seems that it attaches to certain molecules in lipid drafts and that's how it's kicked out of oh, that's how it kicks itself out of the cell in addition, influenza virus uh, also uh, associates with proteins, to glycoproteins in the envelope. Now, it seems that uh, prions, uh, which have, uh, which have, which can have a different uh, abnormal structure, can this this conversion from the normal to the abnormal protein structure 
uh, also occurs in lipid rafts. So it seems that uh, it has functional uh, and clinical importance as well. Now there's a, uh, a, a type of lipid rafts specifically known as cavaioli and these cavaioli are rich with a protein known as cavaiolin and this cavaiolin protein can interact with uh, cholesterol as well as an, a cytosolic uh, protein known as cavin. Okay, So this is uh, right here you can see in, in blue the uh, cavaiolin and associated with caviolin is the protein um, cavin. Okay. Now caviolin uh, are really important as well in clustering signaling molecules as well as uh, other uh, uh, cellular activities including endocytosis, lipid transport and so on. Okay. Now, so these are lipids. Now, talking about uh, proteins, uh, proteins. There are different types of proteins, as you can see in here. So you have proteins that uh, that span the plasma membrane several times. You have proteins that uh, span the membrane just once. There's, they ha only have one uh, transmembrane domain. There are proteins that associate with uh, protein mo uh, with membrane protein molecules. Okay, and so on. So uh, some some proteins are glycosylated, other proteins are not. Oh, so so there there are a variety of proteins uh, uh, of membrane proteins, and you can see some proteins that that have a hydrophobic part that can help them associate with the plasma. So there are different types of membrane proteins. Okay, uh, again this illustrates the different types. So and and even for proteins that span the plasma membrane just once uh, having only one transmembrane domain there are two types you have a type 1 and type 2 depending on the orientation and the direction of the n terminus and the c terminus as you can see in here okay so you can see that the uh, you, you can see that type 1 proteins have the carboxy terminus in the cytoplasmic uh, side of the plasma membrane and uh, and uh, the N terminus uh, out uh, is, is located, localized outside of the, or positioned or oriented outside of the cell. The opposite is true for type 2 proteins. Now, uh, proteins in the plasma membrane are not static. It's not like they are fixed in a place and that's it. Rather, uh, they are really dynamic and they move throughout the plasma membrane and this was shown in an experiment where uh, two cells were taken human cell and mouse cell and they were labeled uh, with different colors and then the two cells were fused so their plasma membranes were fused and after a while you can see the uh, homogeneous distribution of proteins in the plasma membrane meaning that these proteins can really move in the plasma membrane but this movement really is not um, is not free uh, um, without limit or without restriction rather they are restricted in certain places so for example cells that have a polarity meaning cells that have like an apical side and a basolateral side a bottom side and a top side they should have distinct proteins uh, in the apical portion uh, different than those that exist in the basolateral uh, part of the plasma membrane or the cell and, and that makes sense of course because each one of them has its own function and it can interact with different molecules now how are these proteins restricted in the plasma membrane well one way is that uh, these proteins can interact with the cytoskeleton inside cells, so they are uh, static. They they can hardly move. Uh, another uh, another mechanism by which their movement is restricted is the presence of tight junctions. So these are these spaces between cells are closed by certain structures in the cells in cells known uh, or between cells known as tight junctions. Now another uh, mechanism by which protein movement can be restricted 
is that um, the lipid composition such as clustering of proteins in lipid rafts okay so they they do not move outside the lipid raft now the surface of the plasma membrane of uh, of cells is rich with proteins that are glycosylated glycoproteins as well as glycolipids uh, and and in some cells you see that there is a coating of the plasma membrane with sugar molecules okay so this coating can uh, can uh, can have different functions or different purposes one of them is that cells are protected from uh, from any type of stress or collision with other molecules uh, or other cell types um, also they form the the sugar coating forms a barrier for microorganisms so microorganisms cannot penetrate into cells now the the sugar molecules also give sort of like a, uh, a an identification of the cell so uh, immune cells like leukocytes for example can recognize uh, different cells by the type of sugar molecules that they have on their surface now this coating is known as glycocalyx glycocalyx now so let's talk about the endoplasmic reticulum now this is the endoplasmic reticulum shown in blue and you can see that it is really one of the largest if not the largest structure structures that exist inside the cell okay now uh, now the endoplasmic reticulum is defined as a network of membrane enclosed tubules so you can see that there are tubules okay that are connected to each other okay and it's almost like uh, it's made of sacs or uh, bags or kiosks okay so um, and it is connected to the nuclear envelope so it's part so it's like an extension of the nuclear envelope now the uh, endoplasmic reticulum actually uh, has has uh, two types and they are connected to each other as well one type is known as the rough endoplasmic reticulum this is the part of the er that is that has ribosomes associated uh, with the surface of er and you have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum that is free of ribosomes now there is also no something known as the transitional element that separates the ER from the Golgi apparatus. Now, one of the functions of the endoplasmic reticulum is that uh, uh, proteins can be taken inside where they can be modified and from the ER proteins can be uh, transported into different parts of the cell like the Golgi and uh, like the Golgi and from the Golgi to the plasma membrane uh, vesicles like endosomes and lysosomes secretory vesicles or uh, proteins can be directed uh, 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 into the plasma membrane or the peroxisomes without passing through the Golgi apparatus now some other proteins and th and these proteins by the way these are the ones that are synthesized these are the proteins that are synthesized on the surface of the uh, endoplasmic reticulum uh, the ribosomes that are located on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum now other proteins can be uh, synthesized in the in the cytosol but from the cytosol they can also be directed to different parts of the cell like mitochondria, peroxisomes, uh, uh, and the nucleus as well. Okay, so basically what happens with these proteins is that there are different types of proteins that are taken into the endoplasmic reticulum and from the endoplasmic reticulum they are, they are taken into the Golgi and from the Golgi they can be uh, transported to the plasma membrane, secreted uh, taken to lysosomes or um, uh, lysosomes or other types of vesicles. Okay, 
So this is known as the secretory path. So what does happen or how, how, how do cells know that this protein should be synthesized on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum or in the cytosol? Well, the signal is that there is a certain sequence of uh, amino acids that exists at the end terminus of the protein. And this sequence of amino acids is known as the signal sequence. Okay? And this is the signal that tells cells that this protein should be taken uh, to be synthesized uh, in ribosomes associated with the endoplasmic reticulum or in other words on uh, on the surface of rough endoplasmic reticulum okay so you can watch this if you want so how does that happen how are proteins taken uh, to the surface of endoplasmic of rough endoplasmic reticulum well there's this signal sequence as i said at the end terminus so as it comes out of the ribosome it can be recognized by a protein known as signal recognition particle. So this protein binds to the signal sequence and it directs the ribosomes to the surface of the ER where this protein SRP binds to its receptor. And uh, it helps the ribosome associate with a channel known as a translocon translocon okay so so the SRP, SRP takes the ribosome to the uh, uh, receptor and the translocon and uh, synthesis uh, starts uh, uh, or resumes allowing for entry of the protein as it is synthesized into into the endoplasmic reticulum now uh, what happens then is that th so the channel so it's, it's, it's closed and the channel opens up uh, translation resumes uh, the protein is inserted into the endoplasmic reticulum and then the signal sequence is cleaved allowing for the protein to be completely synthesized and translocated into the endoplasmic reticulum okay so we have, as I said, secretory pathways um, where proteins are taken into um, into uh, different parts of, of the cell, into different organelles. Okay, so these organelles also contain plasma, uh, contain membrane proteins, and these membrane proteins are actually trans. Uh, are they are inserted into the, the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum and they are pinched off okay so مثل العجينة يعني لما الوالدة تخبز وتاخد هيك جزء من العجينة same thing happens so you have a vesicle that forms uh, from the endoplasmic reticulum uh, so that it looks uh, like a sac a keys okay so the question is how how uh, are uh, proteins uh, inserted into the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum? Now notice something by the way, that the lumens of ER and Golgi apparatus are topologically uh, equivalent to each other, okay? Uh, uh, and, and, and they are similar to the exterior of the cell. So what's inside the Golgi apparatus and inside, and, uh, and inside the, the endoplasmic reticulum is basically the environment inside is similar to what's what exists outside of the cell okay so how are proteins inserted into the plasma membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum well what happens is that as the protein is uh, in, in inserted or synthesized uh, into the plasma membrane what happens is that you have a a signal so the signal sequence is cleaved okay what happens is that there is what is known as a transmembrane sequence so this is another sequence that exists within proteins so not not part of the 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 signal sequence which is cleaved off okay so you have a transmembrane sequence that tells the translocon that this protein 
should be stuck or this part of the protein should be part of the plasma membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. What happens then is that the rest of the protein is synthesized outside of the endoplasmic reticulum rather than translocated inside. Okay? And then the protein is pushed out of the translocon and it becomes part of the uh, endoplasmic reticulum membrane. Proteins can also be inserted um, without a signal peptide uh, taking them to the uh, surface of the endoplasmic reticulum. Rather, they have uh, a, an internal transmembrane sequence. Okay, and this sequence uh, uh, is also associated with the. Uh, it, it also binds, or this sequence uh, tells the um, uh, signal recognition particle. Uh, protein, um, it, it, it tells this protein that this protein should be part of the endoplasmic reticulum membrane. Uh, so you have this internal transmembrane domain that allows the protein to be inserted into the plasma membrane. Now notice something here that's important, which is the orientation of the transmembrane sequence is important because it tells the uh, translocon whether the end terminus should be inside the lumen of the ER or the C terminus okay so there are two two different mechanisms or two different directions of how synthesis takes place now once the protein is inside the endoplasmic reticulum the environment inside the ER is quite uh, oxidizing. Okay, what happens is that the uh, you can have the formation of disulfide bonds. So the cysteine uh, R groups are uh, are oxidized, uh, allowing for this uh, disulfide linkage uh, or disulfide bonds between the different cysteines. This is um, uh, assisted by an enzyme known as disulfide isomerase. So the environment inside the ER is oxidizing. This is different than the environment outside the cytosol, which is, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, the environment inside the cytosol, which is reducing. Also what happens once the protein is translocated inside is that it binds to a chaperon, a chaperon known as BIP. And BIP helps in folding the protein into the proper shape. Also, what you have inside ER, what happens inside ER is that you have the assembly of multi subunit proteins before they are released outside of the cell or outside of the endoplasmic reticulum. So it's all organized inside. What happens as well inside the ER is that you can have modification of the protein itself uh, for example you can have the addition of lipid molecules as well as sugar molecules uh, uh, inside the ER for example the attachment of oligosaccharides takes place in to in inside the ER with the help of a lipid carrier known as dolichol so on dolly call you have the uh, assembly of the different sugars and then dolly call is uh, dolly call transfers this uh, sugar structure onto the protein so it becomes part of the protein as it is synthesized okay the same thing happens with the attachment of uh, glycolipid anchors that can help uh, proteins associate with the plasma membrane. So what's the uh, importance of the uh, of glycosylation? Well, glycosylation prevents uh, protein aggregation in the ER. Okay, and it helps in further protein sorting as we will see, uh, for example, for lysosomal proteins. Okay. 
so once you have the formation of this large structure on on the on, on proteins uh, glucose residues can be removed and there is a reason why these glucose residues must be removed in that you have a protein known as calreticulin okay so uh, you, from the name you can tell that it's uh, dependent on calcium and reticulin reticulin meaning that it's present in the endoplasmic reticulum okay so this protein ra ra uh, calreticulin is a chaperone it helps in folding of a protein and it is a folding sensor so what happens is that if the protein is not folded properly then um, then uh, uh, you have the addition of ubiquitin uh, molecules which are small uh, uh, hydrophobic molecules and the protein is transported outside into the cytosol where it can be degraded by proteasomes or in proteasomes but if the protein is correctly folded then it can be transported out of the ER to the transitional ER that is located between the ER and the Golgi apparatus so cal reticulin is a folding sensor of proteins now let's say that you have a large number of proteins that are misfolded that means that the cell is uh, going through some stress or hard times now there are there is something known as the unfolded protein response which is basically it, it's a sensor for the overall uh, quality control of proteins and protein structures and there are three receptors on the cell surface that can function in sensing uh, protein folding overall now what these proteins do is that uh, they can phosphorylate the eukaryotic initiation factor 2 remember we talked about this initiation factor and this is the initiation factor of translation that helps in bringing tRNA carrying uh, the, the first methionine in initiating translation and if initiation factor 2 is phosphorylated then translation altogether stops it's blocked okay and that makes sense so cells need to stop all uh, processes of translation until it makes sure that uh, protein f folding uh, can be done accurately now and 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 the other mechanism is that some of these uh, uh, sensors some of these receptors what they do is that they can induce the production of transcription factors that are uh, that encode uh, chaperone enzymes uh, overall okay and these um, uh, and, and these um, uh, chaperones that help in protein folding as well as uh, enzymes uh, involved in lipid synthesis and other ER associated degradation proteins that help in processing of unf or misfolded proteins now the other function of the endoplasmic reticulum is synthesis of phospholipids and this takes this takes place on in on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum because the enzymes responsible for synthesizing lipids phospholipids are located uh, inside the plasma membrane okay now the thing is um, synthesis of phospholipids specifically takes place on the cytosolic side of the ER so whenever you have synthesis of of these phospholipids of course you will have more phospholipids on one side of the membrane or in one of the two leaflets which is the, the cytosolic leaflet and you have more of those than on, on the other part of the other leaflet well what happens then is that you have enzymes known as flipases and flipases what they do is that they flip these phospholipids uh, filling in the gap and equalizing the, por the proportion 
of phospholipids on both sides of the plasma membrane. Now the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, speci specifically the smooth endoplasmic uh, reticulum, is responsible for synthesis of ceramides. Okay, so um, and 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 ceramides are important for uh, as precursors uh, for uh, uh, for other other types of uh, sphingolipids as well. such as sphingomyelin and uh, uh, gluco or glycosphingolipids okay so don't worry about the the sequence of reactions that take place it's just the um, the whole idea the basic idea now um, other types of lipids can also be synthesized uh, specifically uh, cholesterol uh, it, it can take it it takes place in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, okay, and um, and that's why in some cells like the steroid producing cells, such as uh, testis cells in the testis and ovaries, uh, where you have a lot of production of uh, cholesterol and and later on um, steroid uh, steroid hormones, uh, they these cells have large amounts of smooth endoplasmic reticulum. In addition. Uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum is abundant in the liver uh, where you have um, a metabolism of lipid soluble compounds taking place inside as well now what happens then is that um, you have the, the transport of of, um, uh, of of these proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum to uh, what is known as the ER Golgi intermediate compartment so it's located right between the endoplasmic reticulum and uh, the Golgi apparatus okay so again maybe it's like a quality control check as well before proteins are transported to the Golgi note that when proteins are transported uh, from the ER to the Golgi they still maintain the same orientation that is you see like this protein for example is ex exposed to the outside and uh, this part is to the is located to the inside what happens is that again you have you see that this part when it reaches the Golgi apparatus it, it still maintains the same topology or uh, topological orientation that is it's also it maintains uh, that it's exposed to the outside of the Golgi. Okay. Then we have uh, what happens. Then uh, let's say that some some ER proteins are taken inside vesicles into the uh, ER Golgi apparatus uh, intermediate compartment or to the Golgi. Well, these these proteins must be uh, taken back to the ER. And this happens because there is a certain sequence known as KDEL, which stands for lysine, aspartate, uh, glutamate, and leucine. Uh, this sequence is present in the C terminus of protein of ER proteins, and it binds uh, th these sequences bind to speci special receptors, and these are taken back into the ER. Okay, there is another sequence. Uh, which is lysine, lysine, any amino acid, any amino acid. Now, these, uh, this signal peptide right here, or this uh, sequence right here, also tells cells that this uh, protein must be taken back into the ER. So, this sequence right here is specific for transmembrane proteins, whereas the KDEL is uh, special for luminal. Uh, proteins, proteins that ex that should exist in the lumen of the.